Hi, everyone. Don't go anywhere. This is Ask an Autism Mom Live. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ask an Autism Mom Live. I'm Jen Eggert of LackeyKid.com, and you can join me every Monday to share tips, learn tips, sorry, meet other parents, and share your insights. On today's show, we'll be talking about how to have a sensory-friendly Halloween with your family. If you know someone who could use those tips, go ahead and share this video on your timeline now or tag them in the comments below. I want to welcome those of you watching live on Facebook or listening to the podcast on iTunes or YouTube. If you want to get alerts to join us live and ask questions live, you can visit LackeyKid.com forward slash live. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's show. Oh, Angela, I'm sorry you're going to miss today's show, but I know how important starting out this ABA training is. Um, hope it goes well. Message me tonight. Let me know how you guys are doing. I have been thinking about you as you start this new and exciting journey of ABA therapy. If you're just joining us, you are listening to Ask an Autism Mom show, and we're talking about how you can have a blast celebrating a very sensory-friendly Halloween. I can't wait to dig into this topic with you today, but first we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by LackeyKid.com. LackeyKid provides quality sensory products for children and families with special needs. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Um, Marlene. I have some ideas of, on that, and I will explain how I'm doing it this year, I think. But I love your ideas, and I will discuss them. Um, remind me when I do the question and answer. I want to talk about how you do it. Hi, Melinda. Hi, Angela. Welcome to today's show. So if you're just joining us, we're listening to the Ask an Autism Mom show, and we're talking about some tips and tricks on how to have a sensory-friendly Halloween. I want to remind you, Halloween can be very overwhelming. There's smells, sights, sounds, a lot coming at you all at once. And Halloween tends to really bring that out. People doing spooky music, fog, all these costumes, all these masks, all these props and decorations. It can become very overwhelming very quickly. I try and make it easier on Riley and myself by doing the smaller events, the ones that are more geared for younger children. Hi, my friend Sheila. Thanks for coming. So I do those smaller events. If the event is geared for younger children, I find it easier. Also, I find churches have trunk or treats. When a church does a trunk or treat, they tend to stay away from scary costumes, scary decorations, scary music, and make it more kid-friendly, smaller, more easier for our children to take in and digest. Now, I have a couple of tips for you on how to make this a lot easier. Number one is find a costume that they like and that they can wear. I try and concentrate on having a costume that Riley will actually like and wear. This year, she surprised us. She's going as a little witch. We found purple and black striped leggings. She insisted on a tutu, but she loves tutus, so she's got a little black tutu. We're going to do a plain black top. Long sleeve, short sleeve, I'm not sure. It depends on the weather here. I'm in the south. It's a little warmer. So I also take into account the weather and being weather appropriate in her costume. But I find because I'm going to be putting on one of her shirts, these leggings are like all her other leggings. The tutu goes on top so she doesn't feel it. And then she has a little witch's hat. This is new. Generally, I stay away from wigs, masks, face paint, because I don't know how she's going to react. This year, this little hat has a little purple wig that comes down through it. So we shall see. I have already checked to make sure that I can easily cut out that purple wig if I need to. So pay attention to the fabric. Make sure that they can wear comfortable shoes. Like I said, I stay away from masks, face paint. 
um, textures that they can't handle, wigs. Next, you're going to practice trick-or-treating at home. This is fairly simple. They knock on the door. If you have two people, it makes it easier, one to stay with them and coach them, and one to actually open the door. You can use older siblings, another parent, Grammy, Papa, whatever works for you. But practice knocking on the door, saying trick or treat, and then thank you. For the nonverbal children, they have some bags out there that actually have on there trick or treat. I have autism and can't talk, so thank you very much. And they just simply show the bag, and that speaks for them. And yes, I agree, Melinda. Tricking, trick or treat is a wonderful way to work on communication skills, on social skills. They are practicing. They are working hard on this saying, please, saying thank you, saying trick or treat. And guess what? They get that reward. So they're getting that feedback, which we know for our kids oftentimes spurs them on to try harder. Now, number three is practice trick-or-treating at a friend's house. Tell, call grandma up and tell them you're coming over to practice. Call a couple of your friends. A couple, going to more than just one gives them more experience, and it really helps. And we admit it, guys, most grandparents, aunts, uncles, they love our kids, and they'd be willing to help us out in this way. You do not have to reward them at this point because it's not Halloween. We're not giving out candy, but lots of praise, lots of, you did a good job saying trick or treat. Look, grandma's so happy. And grandma can be behind the door saying, you did such a great job. Give grandma a hug. I'm so proud of you. Really provide that input so that they know they're doing well. Now, on Halloween. Visit the people you know. This is huge, guys. I remember, I have a 14-year-old. So I remember when he was little, we used to, when he was really little, just go to relatives' house. My parents would drive us around, and we'd see those people that we really care about. Grammy and Papa's house, their neighbors who knew him. We would drive to my aunt and uncle's. We would drive to my sister's house, unless she came to my parents'. Her daughter is only a few months younger than my son. So we really worked on those just people we knew. And it makes it easier on our kids. I agree, Angela. It is extremely hard for your kids to understand that we don't go in these people's houses. That's why using people you know makes it easier. Because if they do try and sneak in, it's not so many questions and, an and answers that you have to deal with. Also, when trick-or-treating with someone you know, it's easier. You don't have to sit there and explain, I'm sorry, my son is nonverbal. He can't say trick-or-treat, but he really appreciates it, and thank you. So remember, staying where you know gives them the comfort. They still get to trick-or-treat, but there's not as many questions asked as to why they're acting the way they are. Or even if your child is not wearing a costume, but is still trick-or-treating, the people that you know will understand. Grandma will still love your child for being there and give them a treat. So will your friends, your neighbors, your church friends, other autism parents. I think this is a great opportunity for us as autism parents to band together and say, Hey, if you want to come to my house on Halloween, go ahead. We'll be more sensory friendly and understanding. Maybe are you handing out candy? I can go to your house. But you can actually talk to other parents and kind of make a list of whose houses are handing out candy. And that way you have other autism parents who understand, who will accept your child for who they are. Costume, no costume, whatever. And I also have the suggestion of try out small events. I'm talking church trunk or treats. Some malls do events, although we went to a mall once and it was huge and very overwhelming. 
we were literally in a line of probably a thousand kids just shuffling along waiting. So if you try all those small events, they tend to be easier. Like I said earlier, the small events tend to not be as scary <clears throat> or have parts that are made for younger children to, in a way, even though some of our kids are older, they can't handle those scary sights, sounds. So doing a smaller, more child-friendly event makes it easier on them. And also they would be with children, even though they're much younger, they're with children who are more on that same level. And yes, Marlene, Marilene, I was just about to explain that. It's okay to skip trick-or-treating. Like she's saying, she does not trick or treat because of food because of food allergy and sensory issues. So instead they do a Halloween egg hunt and special dinner and party at home. Dress up is optional. Now, what I have considered because of the neighborhood I live in is asking my parents and some friends and family to send my kids candy so that on Halloween we'll watch a movie, we can dress up if we want. And they can still get that candy. So do what works for your child and your family. If going out doesn't work, forget about it. If they want to stay home and watch the Paw Patrol's Halloween special, yes. Or any other Halloween movies, specials, it doesn't matter as long as it's what your child likes and would want. I don't care if your child is 16 and wants to watch a Sesame Street Halloween show. That's what makes them happy, folks. Let them be happy. On the same token, if they like scarier things and you're okay with it, why not? It is a special day, so find a way that celebrating the special day works for you and your child. Now, I do have a couple of costume ideas that are simple and they are sensory friendly. My first would be sweat sweatshirt costumes. You know those sweatshirts with the hoods? I looked in my son's room. I thought he had one, but he doesn't. I was going to show you. But I know um, my nephew has one, and you put the hood up, and it's Minecraft. Very simple costume, very sensory friendly. And because it's a hood that they own, they're used to it. They're comfortable in it. So there's not that stress. There's not that frustration on their side. The pajama suit costumes. Everybody knows those gorgeous onesies that are out nowadays. Last year, my son got one for Christmas. And if it's not too hot, I think he's going to wear it for Halloween. He actually has two now. But he has um, Ted from one of the adult movies. But it's just a giant fluffy teddy bear. Um, now he will probably wear that even though he is not autistic because that's what he likes and he's 14 and he's going to do what he wants at this point. But he also owns one that when you put the hood on, it's got this, um, fabric piece here. I'll try and get a picture of him in them tonight in posting group, but it's Frankenstein. It can be that simple folks. Now, you can also use soft wash scrubs or lab coats and make them a doctor. A hooded bathrobe costume, same idea as the pajamas and the sweater. It's just a bathrobe with a hood. I've seen some that are kitty cats. Very simple, very comfortable for them, and easy. Now, one of my favorites, um, generally would be for a little boy, is a lumberjack. I saw my friend do this one year and I fell in love and I thought, how sensory friendly is this? Pair of pants that they like, jeans or cargos work best generally. A little plaid shirt. If they allow face paint, you can do like a stubbly beard on them. And she actually um, made, took chainsaws that she bought at Walmart cheap and she attached a hoop and cloth and made the chainsaw into a candy bag. Now, one that I'm not keen on, but that I read in Sensory Friendly Halloween Ideas 
would be cardboard box suspender costumes. You make the costume out of a cardboard box and then you attach it with some type of suspenders, rope, whatever is more comfortable for your child. I have seen um, people use bungee straps, bungee cords to hold these costumes up. And yes, um, I love when families do themes. I really do. Jason, I know you're going as superhero theme this year with a Spider-Man. You're going to be Captain America and you're going to have a Supergirl. That's fun. I remember a lot of these Spider-Man, Superman, Batman costumes are just one piece soft costumes. So they're not too hard. If your kid can't wear the mask, who cares? They can't wear the mask. I remember the year my son had a mask. He didn't wear it. And he doesn't have sensory issues. Another idea, yes, Robin is buying a caution that is bigger and putting it over their actual clothes so that they don't feel it. Now, you can also buy those one-piece colored bodysuits and dress that up however you want. Add a little tail and some cat ears. For little girls right now, the popular thing is unicorns. Add a little unicorn horn. You can also do the simple and use everyday clothes that come from their closet or Walmart or a thrift store. And you can make them into a painter. Where's Waldo? A referee. You can add wings for a fairy. Overalls with a red and green shirt so they can be Super Mario Brothers. Or you can add, like I said, the tail, the cat ears, unicorn horn. Um, I've seen people borrow parents' military uniforms and use those. You can put them in something as simple as camo pants and a shirt. And then you can dress it up to be, are they in the army or are they a hunter? Two simple costumes using the same outfit. Now, another one that I thought was cute, and I wish Riley would have let me think about this one before she picked her witch costume. Get a sweater and glue big, bright, colorful pom-poms on it. Guess what? They're a gumball machine. You can flip through their closet to see what they would wear that you can make into something. It doesn't have to be a real character. Like I said, a lumberjack, a painter. It could be anything simple that they want to do. Thrift shops have ideas and their clothes are worn so they're gentler. They're a little bit more worn so they're softer, not as hard. Now I'm going to quickly read through. If anyone has any questions, please let me know now so that I can answer them. And I'm just going to flip through some of these comments real quick and see. Yes, the mall events are generally crowded and unorganized. I like smaller church events because they're easier. Um, I agree. If you want to be a skeleton, if your child wants to be a skeleton, most stores, big stores, Target, Walmart, they have really gorgeous pajamas that glow in the dark and they're skeletons. Put it on them. They're a skeleton. Super simple, soft pajamas. You can wash them a couple times beforehand to soften them up and make them more comfortable. Oh, I love that, Angela. Last year, Angela's son wanted to be Saturn, the planet. So she put him in regular clothes with a cardboard and a hula hoop around him. That is getting creative, folks. That's what I mean. If your child wants something, try and figure it out because they're probably less difficult when it comes to sensory if your child is really vested in what they want to wear. Riley really wants to be a witch. So I figured that the stress we're going to go through with the wig will be okay because she really wants this. This is her goal for herself this year. Oh my gosh, I love that. Sharla, um, I'm going to make a post in group later today about past Halloween costumes and present and invite you guys to share pictures of your child in costumes. She dressed her daughter up as a service dog. Super simple and super comfortable. 
Sharla, again, when I post pictures, I would love to see a picture. Yes, Rob and I agree. If you dress up with your child, it often makes it easier. They see, oh, mommy's doing it. Like Jason said, they're dressing up. Jason's going to be Captain America with a Supergirl and a Spider-Man. So the kids will see daddy's dressed up too. See, daddy's having fun. Daddy likes his costume. Look, this is so fun. So letting them see you dress up, yes, really does help. Now, what does April have to say? My son wanted to be a dinosaur and found a pair of pajamas at Target that looked like a dinosaur with the hood and everything. Exactly. Pajamas nowadays are really turning to, instead of just having characters on them like they did when my son was small, these pajamas actually turn you into the character. So these pajamas are a wonderful, wonderful idea for some of our kids. They're simple. They're fun. They're gorgeous. And they're super comfortable. Are there any other questions for today? I want to remind everyone that you can join our Facebook group at LackeyKid.com. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Let me, and it will not... minutes folks I messed up the blackykid.com group let me fix that kid.com forward slash there we go that is better, folks. That is how you can join us in our Facebook group. Thank you, Jason, for posting the link as well for us. I appreciate it. Oh, I love that. Um, Angela's saying that her son and his support dog went as Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes one year. If you have a therapy dog, a support dog, a service animal, bring them in on the fun. There's so many. I mean, for a little girl, she could be Dorothy and Toto. Or it could be an army man and his service dog, because we all know that there are um, military canines. So make them into a military canine. Calvin and Hobbes, wonderful idea. You can turn your child and their dog into anything. And adding their service animal or therapy animal to the mix, if the animal can handle it, is a wonderful idea. Idea, Your child will get excited. It incorporates their dog, still allows their dog to come with them, and makes it more fun for the child. Now, I want to thank you all for coming today. I've had a lot of fun. Like I said, I will be going later today. I have to pick up my son from school in a few minutes for a doctor's appointment. But I will be making a post asking people to post their child's Halloween costume pictures. Let's share, folks. The more costume ideas that are posted on this thread I'm going to make, the more other parents can think of ideas that are more helpful to their child. And the more you do that, the easier it is on other parents as well. Chris, I'm so sorry that someone didn't give your son candy last year because they're nonverbal. Last year, um, I participated in my church's trunk or treat, and I had a gentleman come with his mother. I, well, I assume it was his mother. He was, I would say, between 18 and 22, 23. He was not dressed up because he could not handle textures. He was, for the most part, nonverbal. He had semi-verbal skills. And I remember looking and thinking... This guy is taking such a huge risk. But the smile on his face, oh, it got me. So I went to my husband, who was handing out the candy, and I made sure that we gave him a good amount because I know as a mom how it feels. I also said to the mom, way to go for making your son's day because it doesn't matter that he's an adult. His mind is still stuck 
at that of a, I would say probably a four-year-old. So for him, it was appropriate. And his mom supported him fully, even though he refused to wear a costume. So if you're handing out candy, keep that in mind, folks. We know how our kids feel. So if you see a child who's really struggling, show them that you support them. Give them a good job. I'm so proud of you. You're doing so good. If they thank you and say trick or treat, remember to praise them. They're trying really hard. So we really want to support them. Chris, like I said, um, church trunk or treats are easier on littler kids. Also, the idea of, like we had one mom say, they do a Halloween Easter egg type hunt for candy, which is fun for her child. If you have a kid who loves Easter, I think that's awesome. You're making it work for your child. There's also simply buying them candy, turning on a Halloween movie, even if it's Paw Patrol's Halloween special or a Sesame Street special or Goosebumps, whatever. Do something fun for that day that your child can handle, especially if your child has allergies. Um, the idea of doing it yourself and having a little party at home, special food, if they want it, a movie, fun. And Chris, this helps because that way if you do it at home, Everything that you buy, you can guarantee he can eat because it's all dairy free. And yes, if you do have one house that refuses because they refuse to talk, don't let it ruin your night. Just say, it's okay, buddy. Come on. Let's go to the next one. Let's go. Come on. Aren't we having fun? <gasps> Look at that kid. They're your favorite. They're Owlette from, um, oh, I can't remember the show Owlette's from, but I watched it all weekend. <laughs> Um, I agree, Charla. I love the idea of handing out cards that say, I can't talk, but I do love candy trick or treat. And yes, Angela, I wanted to mention that there are a lot of places nowadays and people who participate in PJ masks. Thank you, Sierra. Ellis from PJ mask. There are a lot of people now who participate in the teal pumpkin project. If you see a teal pumpkin, that means that they are allergy friendly. It generally means that they will give a small prize instead of candy. Um, I love it. I try and make sure that I have stuff that is friendly for those younger kids and allergy children. But the teal pumpkins are food allergy safe homes. So if you have a food allergy child, Try and see teal. Chris, like I said, you can even take a um, plain tote bag you could buy at the dollar store and you can write on it, trick or treat. I'm autistic and can't talk, but thank you very much. Or something to that extent. Whatever you want to put that you feel comfortable with. You can make the bag yourself, folks. Or you can do like one of our moms did and make cards that make it easy. Now, we will continue this discussion in group today. Like I said, I got to run and pick up my son from school. We've got doctor's appointments today, unfortunately. But I will be posting later in doing um, costume thread. Feel free to post your child dressed up in costumes. Past, previous, it doesn't matter. Let's share how wonderful our kids are. And let's show other parents different ideas that work. I want to thank you all for watching today. Sorry. I'm Jane. I'm Jen Eggert, and you can join me live every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern for more parenting tips. Remember, again, you can always join our support group at lackeykid.com forward slash group, where we share tips, insight. If you need someone to listen to, I've had a lot of moms come in there, some dads, but mostly moms. And they just post to vent. We're here to listen. We're here to support you. I want to build a community of love and support. That's what we need. That's what our children need. This diagnosis of autism is scary. It's hard. It can be heartbreaking at times. So come and join other parents who understand 
and who will love you and your child for who you are. Also, check out our blog and our YouTube channel. I can't wait to see you all in group later today. Until next time, please remember, every kid brings good luck. Bye, everybody. Have a great day, and thank you for watching.